Hello everyone and welcome to Entrepreneur India's Smart Investing Series. Uh, we are kickstarting this very special series today with a timely topic of investing safely during COVID-19. Uh, the main purpose of this series is to provide our audience with uh, useful tips on how they can invest and manage their money to grow their wealth. I'm Shipra and I'll be moderating this very interesting panel we have put together to discuss how investors can navigate the choppy markets, stay the course with their goals and manage their investments during COVID-19. So let me lay the ground rules for uh, our attendees. Uh, we please request you to attend the webinar from a quiet room or an office with headphones and sit in an area with maximum internet sign signal to avoid any lag during the webinar. Uh, post the 30 minute discussion with our speakers, we'll be holding a Q&A session for all the attendees. Uh, so the attendees who are willing to ask questions will be automatically uh, unmuted and will be asked to ask their questions. Uh, if you want to ask, submit your questions, please do so in the Q&A box present uh, at the below of the screen. Uh, we will spend approximately 15 minutes at the end of the session to answer questions. So uh, before that, please uh, hear our speakers uh, intently and be ready with your questions. Uh, so to open the Q&A box, uh, you can click on the Q&A box and you can submit your question there. Okay, so let me start by introducing our speakers. Uh, we have with us today Shrikant Subramanian who heads private wealth investments and advisory practice at Kotak Investment Advisors Limited. Additionally, he supervises the wealth advisory desk across the international markets of Singapore, London, and the US. Shrikant joined the Kotak Mahindra Group in 2001, and in close to two decades with the firm, he has worked across businesses and functions, including life insurance, wealth management, and investment ad advisory. Shrikant has also been a member of the working group on SEBI regulations in 2009. Our second speaker is Rahul Jain. He heads the wealth management business for salaried professionals and HNIs at Edelweiss Wealth Management. He started his journey with Edelweiss in 2008 as a zonal business head and has since then grown multiple levels to building and heading a business unit. Rahul has been instrumental in integrating two businesses of Edelweiss Financial Advisor and Client Advisory Services into Edelweiss Personal Wealth Advisory. A firm believer of customer centricity, he has been credited for evolving a retail advisory business into a full-fledged wealth management business. I am delighted to welcome all the speakers. Thank you very much for joining us today. So let me start the discussion uh, with the topic which, you know, right now concerns most of the sal salaried individuals. With businesses disrupted due to, the co due to the virus, due to COVID-19, salaried individuals are taking salary cuts of as much as 60%. Appraisals have been shelved and of course jobs are being lost. So, you know, all this can be a major setback for investments and financial goals of individual investors. So let me start with you, Shrikant. How do you suggest that individuals can manage their investments so that their financial goals don't suffer in the long run, you know, even if they're taking a salary cut? Well, thanks, Shipra, and also welcome to Rahul, my co-panelist, and also to all the audience. I hope I'm audible, Shipra. Yeah, yeah, you're audible. Yeah. Okay. No, it's an interesting question, and I I, I do uh, agree with you that uh, most of the salaried professionals have seen it uh, fairly uh, difficult as far as the current uh, era of COVID is concerned. My limited uh, two bits of advice to everyone would be that as much as possible, do not derail from the uh, discipline of investment that you've created, but that also means that uh, it should not get precedence over uh, any kind of borrowing that you may temp be tempted to make. I think in the long run, what is absolutely crucial is that all of us learn to live within our means. So earlier, if I were to get 100 rupees as my salary income, and I was able to meet my lifestyle expenses and all my other expenses in about 60, 70 rupees, and the balance 20 to 30 rupees is something that I was investing. I think if there is any possibility to invest anything within that 20 to 30 rupees, we should continue to invest. But if it has gone, if for some unfortunate reason, the expenses have not gone down as much, but the salary has gone down more, then I think do not worry, this too shall pass. 
right now hold tight have your expenses to the bare minimum as possible try not to take any unforeseen loans that you may uh, be tempted to take as easy thing uh, and once it is over uh, come back to the discipline of investing and if there are any chances because what has happened is while your income levels have dropped for most of us i'm also a salaried professional for most of us our expenses have also dropped considerably whether it's to do with the fuel expense whether it's to do with any other kind of uh, 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 entertainment eating out leisure so most of those expenses have also come off so i think it is time that we take a hard look at our expenses make it a very strongly disciplined personal balance sheet of ours and if there is any iota of possibility of continuing the investment i would strongly recommend but not at the at the cost of taking any borrowings yeah you said it rightly uh, shrikan that uh, even if our salaries have gone down so have our expenses you know especially when we were in a strict lockdown we practically had no avenue to spend except for our utilities and everything else rahul what would you like to add here so i think i largely agree with the point what shrikan said but since shrikan has already spoken about investments uh, i think uh, if you look at from financial goals point of view the current environment your growth rate inflation all are very important part when you make your plans because that is how you evaluate current value and future value time horizon of investments but i think in this whole pandemic one thing which is also coming out very clearly which was your basic question also about salary cuts uncertainty of job etc which are there uh, i think keeping that into mind there are certain things which i would like to advise to the viewers and the attendees uh, one is that since this is now like a hanging sword in your hair that there can be a job cut etc you should have a contingency plan a contingency fund which should be there at least 6 months of your expenses should be in a contingency fund which should be in a liquid fund or an fd mm-hmm. one i think it's a good time where you have to reprioritize your goals so certain goals are very important like your child education so that should be adequately you have should have money around the same but there are discretionary goals also like buying a car which can be deprioritized that is second third is i at what uh, uh uh shrikan also said that the expenses have gone down but yes you should also be very clear that your discretionary expense expenses should be reduced that is the third one and fourth is that i think it's a good time to reassess your risk profile because your risk profile is like willingness and your ability and right now the ability really goes on because your job is uncertain there's a salary cut which is happening which re- reduces your ability to take risk and obviously it, it, this time you would have also reassessed your abilities how much you can manage risk in the current environment would be a good reflection for you so these are three four points which you should consider uh, while thinking about your investments in such current scenario of pandemic etc yeah a very relevant point uh, rahul in fact you know uh, about the financial risk i would like to revisit this again later uh, but let me start with you know the specifics of investing so this is about you know how to manage your overall uh, cash flow and everything so if we have to talk about specifics of investing let's start with equity uh, so you know the the covid 19 led crisis sent shock waves shock waves around stock market back in march uh, bsc sensex fell to about 28000 points and though it has gained some 10000 points since but the market still remain highly volatile uh, so rahul what according to you should be the investing strategy of equity investors in volatile markets so for me uh, when i look at investing a strategy i Look at equity or other asset classes separately. I look at it the holistic way. For me, if you ask me, asset is is one of the ways which has been working. Whether it's a bull market or whether it's a bear market, an asset allocation is what it's about. Uh, understanding investment objective, risk appetite, and investment horizon. And really, then you get a good portfolio which is a mix of debt, equity, and gold all across. So uh, I think depending on the on your Uh, risk appetite, your uh, your investment horizon, what age you are, you can have a good asset allocation ratio, and then depending on whether you're in a bull market or bear market, effectively, uh, you can realign your equity portfolio accordingly. We always believe that you should you should ensure booking your profits in equity regularly, and also when the downturn is there, you should use this opportunity. And the best part of asset allocation, which I feel, is that it takes out the emotion of investing. i think it rationalizes one investment behavior 
which is otherwise guided by mostly greed and fear. We have often seen people uh, blind to risk in bull markets and blind to opportunities in a bear market. Asset allocation as such in that sense helps you in achieving on both the sides. So asset allocation as a strategy works well. Yeah, uh, completely true. But uh, you know, so I was just uh, reading some reports and I was reading Amphi data also. Uh, so what I saw was that, you know, I, so in, in the beginning in March and April, uh, the MF inflows were not so much impacted, SIP especially, but later in uh, in May, June, it, it, the inflows came down. Maybe it had to do with salary cuts or, you know, we can't know what the reasons were, but it did happen. So Srikant, let me ask you, uh, you know, in such a case, the basic behavior, even though we tell our uh, you know, the investors that, okay, you know, in a falling market, don't leave the markets, you know, fearing that your market, uh, your money will go down further. In fact, wait for the market to correct. And then if you have to exit, then, you know, wait for it to start rebounding again. But the general investor behavior is to exit when the market is falling. And we have seen that this time also, it was no exception. Uh, you know, another trend, which I have seen is I was also uh, reading some report by Zeroda that a lot of young investors have started flocking to direct stock trading. Uh, during this pandemic. So on one hand, we see MF inflows going down, but on the other hand, we are seeing, uh, you know, a spike in investor interest in stock trading. So how do you see it? How do you see this trend uh, among young investors? How, how uh, you know, safe or uh, how do you see it basically? So I think very relevant question, Shifra. So on both uh, points of yours, uh, I think uh, uh, you, you answered it yourself. I think SIP is a, a good, safe way. Uh, and I think Rahul made a much uh, relevant point on the overall concept of asset allocation. And I would seriously urge all the listeners to actually give a lot of credibility to what he said, because it's not a question of equity and debt. It's always a question of your overall asset allocation. Drilling it down specific to equity, Shibra, you made a pertinent point that SIPs have a lot of value because if you continue with the journey of SIPs over a long period of time, you would have seen markets at high levels, low levels, and it sort of had this whole tendency to average it out. And I think all of us uh, have always heard, listened, but never unfortunately fully implemented that the real uh, reward of investing in equity markets is over long periods of time. The power of compounding, and there is a simple rule of 72 that many of us follow, all that the rule of 72 says is 72 divided by the percentage of returns that you get is the number of years it takes for your money to double. So example, if you believe that you will get 12% uh, rate of return, 72 divided by 12 is six years your money will double. Now, and usually you can anyone can uh, check this factual data. Indian markets over the last 10 years is in the region of 11, 12% which means all of us know that if we just stick to that philosophy, do not get swayed by uh, what is happening right now because uh, these markets are much more resilient than one year going here or one year going there. And if we continue our journey through the mode of SIP, then 11%, 12% from a growing economy like India is not too difficult to expect. And if that be true, we are looking at six years, seven years for the compounding benefit to really look at your uh, money sort of doubling. It's pure mathematics. It's not mm -hmm. any advice that I'm giving. On your point, point of stock trading, yes, I think with all that is happening in the market, A, because of players like Zeroda that you mentioned, there has been a lot of technological disruption, which is giving uh, the new millennials, the new professionals, ability to trade on a very seamless and a friction-free basis on platforms such as Zeroda and many others. Uh, and also on very low cost. And I think it's a brilliant thing because it is leading to democratization of investors who have always been very wary of entering into stock markets, didn't know who to call, how to call, and there was always that inertia. And also there was an expense attached. Now feel far more comfortable uh, just uh, onboarding themselves onto a platform, which is done in a very user-friendly manner, very cost-effective, and they feel that they could, using that platform, start uh, buying some stock. So, to that extent, the story is absolutely apt. But my very strong word of caution is that stock market, unfortunately, is not all art. It is also science. There is a reason why certain stocks do well, and there is a reason why certain stocks do badly. And there is a reason why there are so many professionals 
who are employed in the area of equity research and wealth management and mutual fund, that each of these stocks ultimately behave in the way the underlying companies are set to behave. So my limited uh, word of caution and advice to all my fellow listeners is, it is absolutely brilliant that they are able to get platforms and they feel much more comfortable buying and selling stocks, but they should very clearly decide, are they in this for the purposes of trading and making quick money, or are they in this as long-term investigators? If they are in this for the former, well, there is very limited value add that I can do because then there is not much that you can do with research or science. You get lucky, you don't get lucky, you win some, you lose some. But as far as long-term wealth creation is concerned, if they are going to these platforms and uh, uh, and both Edelweiss and Kotak also are offering these kind of platforms to investors, I think they should do the second part of it also right. Not only should they invest in stocks, but I think they should, they are well advised to read about the companies that they are buying. If not, do in-depth research, a little bit of what the company is into, how the, what level of cash flow the company has, what is the profitability of the company, what kind of revenue growth the company has, how much the debt has the company has. It may look too technical, but trust me, if you do that over six months to one year, just have about five or six parameters that you look at, in about six months time, you will get a hang of how to look at companies uh, which you think will not be into any kind of big risks and big volatility. So my limited point, it's a great healthy trend, but it should be alongside with exercising a lot of caution, should not be done only for trading purposes, should be done to create wealth over long periods of time. You know, on that note, uh, what you just said about the fundamentals of uh, stock investing, uh, we have a question from one of our readers who's asking, uh, sorry, viewers, who's asking that are pharma and stocks an attract proposition for the next uh, one to two years? Uh, anything you would like to suggest this uh, viewer, Srikant, on pharma and IT stocks, uh, whether they are an attractive proposition for the next five to six months? So again, both of them have done exceedingly well. So uh, pharma yeah. stocks are almost close to the 52-week high. Some of the IT stocks are doing exceptionally well. I would refrain from giving too much of a sector view because our own view as of now is COVID has been such an unknown unknown that uh, taking a sector bet in uh, an ecosystem like this it can have uh, multiple ramifications. I think what we are dealing with right now is very limited transparent information. So I think what the view of our own firm is to while do not ditch overall equity as an investment class, but do not go too much as far as sector bias is concerned. So I will have to stick to the view that our own view is we are not being too bullish or bearish about any sector. We are looking at it as a slightly more diversified call, but any investor looking at pharma, which intuitively looks like it's going to be a great bet because of all that has happened and general consciousness of investors over healthcare and pharma post COVID. Similarly, uh, the entire disruption that technology builds is giving way to a narrative that uh, IT stocks will do well is okay to the extent that the overall philosophy that I mentioned is there. But one look at the stocks also seem to suggest that they seem to be very well valued. I will not say overvalued or undervalued, but they are very well valued. So investors should exercise caution. There are certain mid-cap pharma and IT companies that we at least believe that are looking very frothy. Uh, the leaders, of course, will always continue to do well. So again, two, th two things. Both these sectors intuitively look like good sectors to hold. The leaders in these two sectors should continue to do well, but the mid-cap stocks in these two sectors are looking a little frothy. But from our point of view, we are right now not making too much of a uh, guessing game as far as sectoral picks are concerned. We are advising investors to stick with a slightly more multi-cap diversified sort of an approach. Uh, so I have one more question on, you know, the, the six-year theory that you were just talking about, Shrikant. So I'll quickly take this question up since it's, uh, I mean, we just spoke about, you just spoke about it. Uh, so Ritu is asking, with the six-year theory, what should the portfolio look like and what are the best practices to be followed during these six years to reach the compound return goal? So the golden rule is not to deviate. I mean, the six years, give it six years. I, unfortunately, we all talk of six years. <laughs> 
and in six months' time, we start uh, debating whether we did the right thing or not. I think, honestly, trust me, there is no shortcut to doing this. You have to go through uh, this period of cycle. There will be areas such as global financial crisis of 2008. There will be areas such as COVID-19. They will come, they will go, but you stick on with it. There would be good periods where the six will get crunched to five, where the six will get expanded to seven. But by and large, if all of us are eternal optimists and we believe that uh, human endurance is strong enough for us to bounce back and this is not an apocalyptic situation, we should not hold our, we should not lose our patience and continue. So the first do's and don'ts is do not deviate. What do you think? Walk the talk. Second, I think don't be over cute as far as sector theme stocks are concerned. If you gender and the uh, return that I gave an example was, was of simple nifty. So you don't really have to even go to uh, uh, nitpicking which stock, which manager beyond the point. If you like a good fund house, there are fund houses like HDFC, Kotak, ICIC, who are amongst the top three, four, five fund houses and have been there doing businesses for a very long time. If you just pick a good fund house, diversified multi-cap strategy, I think you are good enough. I think there will be periods of time where this is your own advice. You can uh, dabble a little bit into research stocks, into small cap, mid cap areas. But I think if you just choose good quality mutual fund houses, good quality ETFs, stick to the larger diversified theory uh, and stick to the six year, seven year, eight year plan. I think there is nothing that can stop you from uh, building a little nest egg for you as the time is. And I will again urge all leaders not to hold to the six year uh, point of view very strongly. The mathematical point is 72 divided by whatever return you get is the return, is the number of years that it takes for you to double your money. It's mathematics. So for example, the next three years, Indian markets give you 24%. Then in three years, the money doubles because 72 divided by 24 is three. If Indian markets gives you only 7.2% return, percent return, then it will take you 10 years because it is 72 divided by 7.2, it's 10 years. Historically, last 10 years, markets have given close to 11, 12%. So if I use that yardstick, be a cycle for people to uh, develop that over periods of time. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so we'll go back to the discussion and keep our uh, questions on hold for a while. But uh, before I uh, do that, uh, I have a word for our Facebook viewers that uh, you can ask your questions uh, in the comments section. Uh, we will make sure that they are all answered at the end of the discussion. Okay, so moving on, uh, uh, Rahul, let me come to you. Uh, you know, even though you rightly said that it is really a function of asset allocation and not really equity or debt as such, but, you know, uh, some, I mean, it, for for i mean one fundamental is also that it's a function of your risk appetite and there are investors who you know irrespective of uh, what their uh, investment horizon might be or you know uh, they they still uh, prefer sticking to debt instruments or small saving schemes so uh, so you know for risk averse investors debt options are also not looking too attractive because uh, there have been massive cut in interest rates by the rbi so rahul what should bond and fixed income investors do now so if you see in the current scenario i think creating a debt investment strategy especially what you said in a falling interest rate mm -hmm. i think one of the biggest challenge investors facing for example now icic bank is giving a more than a year every at 5% which is, is fairly, fairly low. So it's, I think it's a, it's a complex situation uh, because uh, the investor has to choose between safety and return. So if they settle for uh, safety of bank or quality, I think they'll lose out on returns. And if they aim for higher returns uh, through a corporate deposit or something else uh, in NCD format, then they are a little compromising on credit quality. Uh, I think uh, one of the options is that the debt funds gives you an option of playing in the falling interest rate market. But uh, I think that is something who understands that funds should dabble into it. Uh, as a strategy, if you look right now, uh, we are looking at diversifying the whole debt portfolio into various parts. And there are interesting options available there in that sense also. So for example, you can have a combination of FD, then uh, you can have AAA rated NCDs, which are uh, would be around seven or four. Uh, you can look at an option like an RBI bond which just uh, closed with the enormous amount of inflow which happened 
a, a month back at 7.75, uh, which was again a very attractive rate at looking at the quality of uh, the credit, what is there, this RBI effectively 7.75. So I think a composite of FD, uh, RBI bond, a government tax saving bonds, and then AAA rated and some you can have AA plus, which is perceived high risk, but the reality is high quality credit. Then you can have a good combination of diversified portfolio and still make a good optimum return around 7.5 sorts. So that is how we are suggesting to our clients, our investors, who are primarily looking at fixed income instruments. And I want to, when for them, safety is the utmost important criteria. For them, we are telling them have this composite sort of portfolio and just don't put everything into bank FD. So putting an RBI bond at 7.75 or put in a, an ICC bank FD for me is reasonably the same thing, correct? Effectively. And, and then you end up making more money. Yeah, there might be some terms where you have a higher lock in on RBI bonds, but effectively most of the FD users just keep FD and they keep rolling it over. And, and in a, in a, since you have a diversified portfolio, a certain part of portfolio can anyways liquidate, be liquidated if you have some exigencies coming in. So that is how we are uh, suggesting and, and, and uh, helping our clients and investors how to dabble with such a situation where the interest rates are falling. But I tell you, it's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem for more of senior citizens because they generally uh, are dependent on uh, cash flows from FDs, or the fixed deposits, etc., uh, to manage their monthly. Yeah, so, definitely. The PPF also reduced. Yes, yes. So all yeah. this is impacting. But effectively, now you have to dabble between safety or returns, and and you have and in this environment, it's it's better to be safe right now. Yes, definitely. So I also have an add on question here. And also, you know, coming back to the whole point of uh, what we were talking about, uh, you know, assessing your financial risk. So do you think that volatile markets, uh, you know, as well as the coronavirus hit economy presents a good opportunity, uh, you know, to reassess your fin overall financial risk? Because if seeing a downturn, people are moving out of the market, their equity investments, you know, it fundamentally means that you really can't take the volatility that comes with equity investments. So do you think it's a good opportunity to reassess your financial risk? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So for example, if you see your assessment of financial risk, the risk you can take are two parameters which I spoke earlier also. One is willingness to take risk and the other is ability to take risk. Mm -hmm. Ability is generally derived from your job security, your current net worth, whether you have dependent parents, children dependent on you, how the family structure is. And the other is the willingness. Willingness is more of your perception, your attitude, uh, how your bringing has been. Are you have been conservative as a as an individual, and and all of your risk assessment tools, etc., are there. But the real, the way you react comes into the real situation. Anyone, any single individual does not like losses in his whether it's temporary or not, and so he, he does generally don't like losses. Correct in the portfolio. I think the situation like this in current pandemic it gives you a good heads up of understanding that what type of risk profile you really belong to. Because if you see in the whole uh, movement of market from March to now, it went to 7,500. Now it's up, um, uh, back to 7,200, so 40% uprise. Effectively, there are a lot of people who squared up because of risk and now also are having a FOMO, fear of missing out yes. in their thinking. But the, the fact is that you have to be have a clear understanding that what is the risk profile assessment that whether you can take that losses in the volatile times or not because that is very very important part and that is a good thing to learn about your future investing that is one i think the ability ability to take risk also changing which i spoke earlier if your job is under threat you're having a salary cut uh, i'm sure your net worth if it's an equity was also got significantly downgraded in terms of your portfolio size so all these two have to be calibrated measured and then reassessed uh, yourself about whether how much of your asset allocation should be in equity or debt. And then again, you go back to asset allocation, communication, conversation, and then you can readjust the portfolio so that you're able to achieve your financial goals in long term. Yes, of course. Uh, so we have about 10 minutes left. So we'll move on to uh, questions from our attendees. Uh, so uh, I, I would request uh, our uh, team to please give mic to Ashlesh. He has a very interesting question. Uh, 
हेलो अश्लेष अश्लेष प्लीज अनम्यूट योर माइक ओके सो Okay, there's some problems. So uh, I'll ask on behalf of Vishesh. His question is, uh, what would you suggest during this crisis, uh, SIP or lump sum? So who would like to take this question? Since Shrikant has given the seventy-two formula, I think he should answer. <laughs> All right. I think yeah. uh, SIP is a much safer bet. I uh, if if you, I mean, it, it will be always a safer bet. Not only in this environment, but in any environment, because uh, you. It, If the, if the question is from a market timing point of view, S I P will always win hand over fist. Lump sum you do when you uh, uh, have been faced with a inordinate amount of liquidity and you are okay investing it over long periods of time. But 99 out of 100 times, it's always best to stagger it, uh, especially in in environment like this when the markets from uh, A went down to uh, B and then back to A. Situations like these to navigate these tough waters. It's anyways a better idea to stick to SIPs. Uh, so there's uh, there's a question from a uh, this uh, this person looks like a stock uh, trader. So he is asking, uh, would you say volatile markets are the best avenues for trading, and why should it be always long term investing when it comes to stock trading? Well, I mentioned that there is there is absolutely no right or wrong. You should know yes. your temperament, uh, and there are investors. I mean, it's not that uh, people don't make a living out of trading. It's a very big Profession, but you should know uh, the nuances of uh, trading. My advice is to all other listeners who are looking at uh, investing as a philosophy for either creating wealth or preserving wealth. Uh, trading comes with different sets of nuances. You need to have the ability to uh, buy, sell, have the temperament to take losses, have the ability to follow, read charts. So as long as uh, you are able to do that, and you. you you enjoy doing that great volatility again cuts both ways volatility vol volatility does not just mean uh, down volatility can mean both up and down so volatility can be a friend as long as you know how to navigate through volatility but overall volatility is i mean i would always do uh, well without a volatile situation something which is slightly more scientific and predictable even for a trading uh, sort of an approach works very well so it's not that uh whether volatility is good or bad it is just that whether we have what it takes to navigate volatility we have what it takes to uh, navigate uh, the uh, nuances of short term investing and trading so uh, i'll clarify there is nothing called right or wrong uh, investors looking at creating capital preserving capital are better off uh, uh, better off uh, approaching it through the fundamental ways of investing invest investors who like the area of finance who who like who have the ability and time and bandwidth and where with all to understand charts and have the risk temperament to take positions on both sides are uh, uh, can obviously trade and that's a big community of investors who also make a lot of money doing that all right Uh, so next question is from Priya Darshini. She's asking, uh, my father is retiring in March 2022. His portfolio fell significantly in the recent market crash. Should he exit or wait for it to recover? Rahul, why don't you answer that? Sorry, can you just repeat the question? Yeah. So she's saying that my father is retiring in March 2022. His portfolio fell significantly in the recent market crash. Uh, should he exit or should he wait for it to recover? so uh, i think uh, if would have fallen in the recent crash i'm sure it would have come back also because yes. market has yes. also improved significantly in last couple of months that is one i want to come back to the again the same point uh, is that at at his father's age i think the asset allocation formula would be use 100 minus your age could be a equity portfolio and if that if, if your equity portfolio is more than that effectively and it would be Convert into debt, and mm -hmm. and and for a person who is retiring, uh, our advice is that large part of portfolio should be into debt. It can give you a good recurring cash flows on monthly basis, so that 
able to ability to meet its expenses on a day to day nature is really possible so in that sense if the if the asset allocation percentage of equity is very high and it should be reduced and and it should be largely debt that is how it should be considered i think right now when the market is again come back uh, to 11300 levels the good opportunity to get out of equity and convert into debt will be a good that sense a good opportunity to get into the right side, right asset allocation so a sort of a add on question here we have from another viewer uh, so one she's asking uh, this is interesting is there a chance of markets revisiting the march 2020 lows i think it's it's it's, it's very difficult to predict uh, what will happen in the market but seeing the current uh, uh, the current uh, parameters etc the how the fi flows how the results are coming in etc It, it the market does not seem to go back to seven thousand five hundred. That is what our our view is. But the market has been very unpredictable. It has always been remain unpredictable. It will always uh, create fear in you. So uh, that is uh, surely a guess to take. Mm -hmm. Ishri, can anything you would like to add here? If you would like to address his concerns about whether the market will go down to its March twenty twenty lows again. And if I if I if I could answer that with certainty, I would be in a different. <laughs> Trade of business, but yes, I, I, I think it's a fair question because since you very recently saw seven thousand six hundred levels, the mind always uh, thinks that uh, what can trigger that. I think I would uh, tend to agree with Rahul. I think while you don't rule out anything in the markets at all because you don't know what the next cannonball to hit you will be, but looks unlikely. A couple of reasons. I think world has uh, digested the issue of COVID. If you look at two markets, both US and Japan. US contracted about nine nine and a half percent quarter on quarter. Japan contracted about seven and a half percent quarter on quarter. Now these are big numbers for economies of the size of US and Japan. Despite that, markets did not fall. Japan, in fact, after giving the data of GDP growth, of, GDP degrowth of minus seven point five percent, only fell down by point eight percent. Similarly, US the day it was down by ten percent GDP was marginally down. So I think. Uh, the bad news is somewhere being factored in. All the central banks across the globe continue to keep the uh, tap open as far as liquidity is concerned. Uh, and I think even in India, with investors on the SIP route and also on the uh, FPI money coming in, I would uh, put the probability very low of market revisiting that low, uh, that kind of a situation. But I won't rule out a correction. Uh, but i will i will not give a very high probability of a correction of that magnitude right okay so i'll take one last question uh, rahul maybe you can answer this uh, our reader is ask uh, sorry our viewer is asking how do you define the word long term and what are the indicators we have to look over when it's when we are saying long term investing so long term generally in equity market is Three years and above, and I can, I she can can also add to this. Three years and above is what we look at long term. I think the parameters of long term, which we have to look, is what she can also spoke about that you have to maintain that discipline of continuing the investments. For example, if the SIP is there, and the formula of if you think it's grow by twelve percent and will grow in six years, then you have to continue with that discipline. That is the most important parameter of long term, and and and. From equity standpoint of view, I think three year plus is something which you should look at long term. All right, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Rahul and Shrikant, for uh, joining us today for this uh, really uh, engaging conversation on investments and you know what investors can do right now during these uh, turbulent times. Uh, so, uh, well, we uh, hope to have you again for another interesting conversation. Okay. And uh, thank you, viewers, for uh, joining us today. And uh, Well, have a good day ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you.